Well, the title of the show is Aporia, Recent Works. And Aporia is a, uh, a philosophical uh, problem where you have two solutions to a problem, but the two solutions are very contrary to each other. Uh, it doesn't seem that they can both solve the problem, but they both do. That's an aporia. Uh, in this recent series that I've done in the last six months, working in my studio in Rock Bay, uh, kind of address that, um, where I begin to, uh, I build a, a fairly rigid, strong, harmonious uh, image, but then I break it down. I try to destroy it. I try to unbalance it. And once I've unbalanced it and broken it thoroughly, I go back and I try to resurrect it. And I try to uh, bring it back into harmony, bring it back into some uh, form of balance. And what's left, uh, what you look, what the viewer is looking at, is a uh, sort of the debris from that struggle. And what's what's evident there is there really were two solutions to that problem, and there really were two solutions that were in quite uh, quite a bit of contrast to each other. One is very uh, harmonious and balanced and careful and the other is very gestural and uh, aggressive and, and strong. But those two solutions, as different as they are, lend their own quality to the final solution, which is what you're looking at. So I decided to call the show Aporia because uh, in a way this show is sort of a dilemma for me and that uh, I've been in Victoria for year and a half now. Uh, my wife and, is from here. My children were born here. We moved up here from the States. And while I uh, realize that Victoria is where I'll be living the rest of my life, probably, my wife loves it here. Uh, I have a hard time with Victoria. Uh, it's a different culture. It's different than, than the States in many ways. And so I have a bit of my own dilemma here. And I'm having to uh, make that work. So I felt that the, uh, the name of my first show would be, it would be appropriate to uh, reference uh, not only the uh, conflict uh, in my work, but the aporia of my life. <laughs> so that's the name. I've been painting for uh, most of my life. Uh, I gave up uh, painting to raise my three children, work full-time as a carpenter and cabinet maker. And as, uh, as they grew up and as they matured, I realized that I had more time on my hands now, and uh, I decided I had to get back to painting. So it never went away. I just sort of put it aside. So about... Gosh, I'm going to say 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I um, went out to the garage in the house we were living in at the time, and I nailed some plywood up on the wall, and I wrote myself a contract, and the contract said, uh, you have permission to draw and paint the ugliest stuff you've ever, ever done for the next six months. Whatever you want to paint and draw, you can paint and draw, no matter how ugly. And uh, I signed it and I posted it on the garage wall. And I started drawing and painting and getting all my uglies out for a good six months. And I found myself never going back to not painting. And um, that was 20 odd years ago and I'm still painting. And uh, hopefully I'm getting better at it, better at understanding what it is I'm supposed to be doing, better at interpreting uh, the ideas I have and, and getting them down on paper more effectively. 
And what's most important to me about my art is that it not be considered simply a commodity, something to be sold, bought and sold. Uh, I think artists fall into that trap very easily, uh, which is why I've always, always endeavored to support myself with my work as a construction manager and teacher, rather than depend on my art, because the minute you do that, the art becomes something other than art. It becomes a commodity. Uh, and that might be okay, but it's certainly not art anymore. So, uh, what's important is that I share it with people. And uh, I love to see their responses. I love to see how they, uh, they look at it, how they engage with it. Uh, there's an artist, I forget who it was, that said art is never complete until the viewer has viewed it. And um, I think that's ver very, very true. So uh, how people respond to my work is, is absolutely uh, important to me. Um, I love to work uh, within limits. I've, I've struggled with, over the years, trying all kinds of different things. And I've discovered that there's a real freedom in limits. So. I limit myself to the sizes and proportions uh, of my paper, of my paper, and of my canvases. I limit my palette uh, so that I, I have freedom in that palette, um, and uh, I limit myself to to the abstract because uh, representational images carry so much baggage and so much information that, unintentionally or intentionally. It really clouds uh, the focus of the work, and it becomes something other than a painting. It becomes a representation, and which I find confuses it. So I, I, I stay away from representational work. And uh, while a lot of my work is very gestural, uh, I don't believe I'm. My intentions are to telegraph or, or um, impose my emotions uh, on the viewer through my work. Uh, but I do think that it's inevitable that uh, part of the artist is telegraphed and, and, and uh, communicated through, through the work to the viewer. And that's sort of a so unintentional on my part. I, I, I like to try to stay very objective, uh, uh, keep an objective relationship to my work, uh, and, uh, and think about it more than feel about it. I'm pretty excited to have a show here in Victoria. It's my first show here. Uh, I've been wanting to have a show here. Uh, I've been wanting to share my work with, with the people in Victoria, the people I know and people I don't know. I've shown in uh, other cities, uh, Seattle, I've had three shows in Seattle. Uh, I've had uh, a show in Montreal over the years, uh, a couple on Bainbridge Island. And um, it's exciting to have a show sort of in your hometown now. This is my new hometown. And uh, uh, I'm really having been enjoying uh, sharing my work with the people I know. It's always surprising to me. People know me as a construction manager or an instructor or a teacher or a businessman of some sort. Uh, and then they discover that I'm a painter and they just are floored sometimes. They, they, they just can't quite grasp how you can be both. Again, there's an aporia there. There's a it's a rock and a hard spot. Uh, uh, on one hand, I'm supposed to be, uh, you know, uh, rigid and it's all numbers and it's very structured and it's very linear and it's very business, business, business. Uh, and then my art, which is so uh, organic and flowing and human and emotional in a way and... Uh, I guess I guess uh, it just surprises people 
that one can have both those uh, lives. Uh, so, um, so it's always interesting to me to, to see the response of people. Sometimes it's a good response and sometimes it's not such a good response. <laughs> but it's always interesting.